Good morning. Today is the 20 is the 14th day of April in this 20 22nd year of our Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Looks like it's going to be another nice day. We have a little bit of cloud cover early in the morning before the sun gets too high to burn it off, but uh, nonetheless uh, another nice spring day for us. Uh, I'd like to pick up with the reading from the Passion Narrative in the 22nd chapter of Luke. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into trial, into time of trial. And then he withdrew from them, about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but your will be done. And then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. And when he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them asleep because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. And while he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? And when those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? And then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said no more of this, and he touched his ear and healed him. When Jesus said to the chief priest and the officers of the temple police and the elders who had come to him, have you come out with sword and clubs as, it, as if it were as if I were a bandit when I was with you day after day in the temple. You didn't lay hand on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. And then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. And then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else, on seeing him, said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And then Peter remembered the words of the Lord, how he had said to him before the cock crows today, You will deny me three times. And he went out and he wept bitterly. The word of the Lord. From Ron Ray Nowen, in a Little Devotional Steadfast Love, for Monday Thursday, which is today, the title, The End is Near. Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father, and having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Now in writes, knowing that your hour has come to pass from this world to your father, and having loved me, you now love me to the end. You give me everything that you have and are. You pour out for me your very self, all the love that you carry for me in your heart now becomes manifest. You wash my feet and then give me your own body and blood as food and drink. And then the commentary on now and 
Jesus knew the end was near. His hour had come to return to the Father. However, the glories of heaven were far from his mind in the upper room. Jesus knew that the next day would bring unimaginable suffering, sorrow, and separation. But first, he performed two far-reaching acts of love. Jesus humbly washed the feet of his surprised disciples, giving them and us a touching example of selfless service. And then he instituted a simple but an extraordinary meal that would become the central part of our worship life. These were only the prelude to his greatest act of love. On Calvary's cross, Jesus loved us to the bitter end, absorbing into himself all our sin and gut and guilt so that we might live with him to our blessed end when we go when we will go to spend eternity with him glenn and vanderkult writing in a maundy thursday devotional called god's grace is sufficient referencing matthew 26 39 my father if it be possible let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was in agony. He knew that suffering and death lay ahead of him. He prayed, asking to be released from this ordeal, yet he was willing to submit to God's will. St. Paul had some kind of ailment. He described it as a thorn in the flesh. He went to God in prayer, seeking God's relief. In fact, he pleaded with God for liberation from his pain, and God answered his prayer, but not as Paul wanted. Instead, God's answer was, my grace is sufficient for you. We don't always get the relief we want, but whether we do or we do not, God's grace is always sufficient for us. Grace is all we really need, nothing more, nothing less. And let us pray. Lord of this day, Lord of your passion, Lord who endured all for our sake, we give you thanks this day for the blessed gift of our life. In whatever status that life may exist, we are yours and your grace is sufficient if we but trust in your presence and in your care. Give us faith and confidence that you are near to us in whatever circumstance life may bring. In this day, in this day of preparation for your fulfillment of a passion that was deeper than any imagined in humanity's existence, let us prepare our hearts to receive the blessed gift that you would go forth to die for our sake. We thank you for that blessing, for that ultimate gift that brings us hope, that brings us salvation. O oh Lord God, might our lives this day be a good reflection that we have what is sufficient to live fully as your people in this world, in our serving, in our care, in our love one for another, reveal yourself to those that would see us and be with us. Be present, O oh Lord, with those whose troubled lives are deep indeed, for the peoples of the Ukraine and surrounding areas, that they might find help and hope in the midst of a war-torn existence. Bring your peace to bear in this troubled land and this troubled area. Touch the hearts of those who are aggressors against them to leave and to return to their homes to bring a more lasting peace. Be present with those who are ill or recovering for Kenneth, for James, for Eloise, for Evelyn, for Bill, for Nikki and Tom, for Lisa, for Inez, for others recovering 
from other issues for Sarah and Becky and their continued recovery from cancer, to Sam, or each that we remember in our hearts before you now. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, this day and forevermore. Amen.